Learn how to code blocks in Minecraft on a Raspberry Pi. You are able to select blocks from an inventory by pressing the E key on your keyboard and then dropping them to build structures. This is one of the joys of Minecraft and people go on and build the most amazing structures. But today what I want to do is show you how you can code blocks to appear using Minecraft Pi on the Raspberry Pi. Minecraft blocks have three coordinates, X, Y and Z. They are three dimensional objects. In the last video in this series, I showed you how to use X, Y, and Z coordinates in Minecraft Pi to find your player's location. And we can use a similar mindset here to place blocks in the Minecraft world. If this is your first time programming Minecraft, then I suggest you watch the first episode on getting started before following what we do here. In a Python 3 new text file, I've already written out the code needed to connect to Minecraft and use the API. Next, I'm going to find the player's location in the game world and store that information in the variables x, y, and z, just like we did in the previous video. Then, I want to add a line of code that places a block just in front of the player. We do this by using the syntax mc.setBlock, and notice the capital letter for block. Inside some brackets, type x plus 1, comma, y, comma, z, comma, and then the value 1. This tells the computer where to place the block on the x, y, and z coordinates in relation to the player. We specified here one block away from the player by using x plus 1. Save this file and then load a new world in Minecraft on your Raspberry Pi. Once loaded, use the tab key on your keyboard to release the mouse and click on run and run module in Python to run your code. You should see a stone block appear nearby. It might be in front of you or you might need to spin around and look for it. Each time you want a block to appear, you need to run the program again. The number one in our code represents the stone block. Each block in Minecraft has a different block ID. We can change this value in our code to change the type of block that appears. Here, I'm changing the value one to the value 103. It's one of my favorite block types, it's melon. You can find a list of all the blocks on the Minecraft wiki. There is even a really handy image that you can see to help you remember the block ID numbers. This is really useful when you want to code structures like buildings and you need to use different blocks. When I write my Minecraft Pi programs, I often use a variable name to reference the blocks I'm using. This is helpful if I use lots of different block types. Here you can see I've added the label wood and stored the block ID 17 in it. In my line of code to set the block, instead of writing the block ID after the coordinates, I've written wood. And when I run the code, it works in exactly the same way. Some blocks in Minecraft have extra attributes. For example, wall. Here I've changed my wood variable to wall and I've stored the block ID 35 in it. This is the block ID for wall. Then to select the color of the wall, I need to add another value in my set block code inside my brackets. One gives us an orange wall block. If we change the value to two, a pink wall block will appear. And then if we change the value to three, a blue wall block will appear. What other colors can you find by changing this value? So that is how to set a single block of a different type in Minecraft Pi. In the next episode, I'll show you how to make a trail of blocks before we start to look at how to set multiple blocks and possibly build structures. My name is Carrie Ann and you've been watching the Geek Girl Diaries. Thank you.